Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are so. Freddie Freeman powered Atlanta's offense through a tough 10-game road trip. Now the Braves are happy to be home, and they're ready to take on red-hot Andrew McCutcheon and the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Braves and Buccos battle next in Atlanta. There's nothing like baseball in Braves country. Great to be back here at Turner Field on a spectacular night for baseball. Big crowd gathering for game one of our weekend set. The Pittsburgh Pirates are in town, and the Braves hope to get healthy with plenty of home cooking tonight. Hi again, friends, along with Joe Simpson and Hall of Famer Tom Glavin. Chip Carey, welcome to the ballpark. The Braves wrapped up a four and six road trip, and now Joe come home to face the red hot Pittsburgh Pirates. Pirates are playing their best baseball of the year after a slow start, Chip. They climbed into second place place in the Central Division. They've won 11 of their last 13 and they just finished a sweep of the San Francisco Giants. Their offense has been good and Andrew McCutcheon after a slow start himself has gotten off to a red hot start so that's going to pose some problems tonight for Mr. Williams Perez Tom. Yes they are. It's a tough lineup but certainly a lineup that I think he's going to be looking forward to facing. He's made the most of his opportunity to get in the starting rotation in three games one and all with a one ERA and a 2.54 ERA. He's gone deeper into the game each time he's gone out there. He's thrown strikes not walked a lot of guys. Ironically enough his highest walk total was in his last game when he walked four and ended up winning. So look for him to go out there and continue to attack the strike zone against this ball club. Let's hope it's a happy homecoming for the Braves. Game Game one here at Turner Field. It's Friday night fireworks. We'll see what happens on the field with lineups and first pitch coming your way right after this. Every day. 
Beautiful night in Atlanta. Williams Perez wrapping up his warm-up tosses. He's set to face the Pittsburgh Pirates who cover town at 29 and 24 on the year. Clint Hurdle's their skipper. This is their Academy Sports and Outdoors starting lineup. Always have to worry about Andrew McCutcheon. He is sizzling hot. He hit 396 with 18 runs scored in his last 27 ball games. Charlie Morton, a former Brave, is on the mound. And as Tom mentioned a moment ago, Williams Perez gets the start for Atlanta, and he's been awfully impressive in rotation. Yeah, we talked about his numbers as a starter. His numbers overall, five games, three games started. 1-0 with a 2-6-6 ERA. 20 innings pitch, so look for him to uh, continue his good work and continue to make the most of this opportunity to get in the rotation. I think he's gaining confidence every time out, Tom. Every start, he gets a little better. Goes a little deeper, like you said, just because he's feeling more comfortable. And the first man he'll face tonight is Gregory Polanco. Polanco made his big league debut June 10th last year. And he's leading off tonight and takes outside ball one. Polanco at 250, three homers, 13 runs batted in. And he's been a hot hitter. He's got an eight game hit streak for Pittsburgh. There's the first strike on an 83 degree night tonight. Wind blowing from left to right toward the Braves' bullpen here in Atlanta. And that's rolled into the seats foul. It's a ball and two strikes. Pittsburgh begins play in the National League Central, six and a half games behind the Cardinals. The Cubs are seven back. The closest teams to the top of the division. Pittsburgh 14 and 15 on the road, but Clint Hurdle's club comes to Atlanta with lots of confidence. They just swept the defending world champions in their home park. Yeah, the only bad thing going for them right now is they're eight and two in their last ten, and so are the Cardinals. So they haven't been able to make up any ground. One ball, two strikes. A fastball just missed. Brian Corbin with the appeal at third. That's Blanco checked it. One of the things I really like about Williams, oh, that was 94. He doesn't have to crank at 94 every time. He's got that two seamer that he would rather feature and get early contact. Little pop fly into right field. Nick Markakis is underneath there. Blanco's retired, and that's how the ball game starts. Time for the Ford Keys for pitching success for Williams Perez, and it does include the first inning. Some of his problems here in his starts, his first three starts have been in the first inning until he gets untracked. And his changeup, which I think he just got an out on, has been such an important pitch for him. And against this hot hitting team, it'll be a big pitch for him tonight, too. Base is empty for Starling Marte, the Pirates left fielder and team leader in homers. He's got 10 of those. Strike delivered to the outside corner. Marte hitting 254. He's also knocked in 34 men. Broken bat. Simmons tricky hop at shorts and a peg in plenty of time. Two out. This series features two pretty good defensive clubs, too. Let's see how the Braves fare with the leather in the series. Cunningham, Maben, and Marquecas left to right of the outfield. Pedro Siriaco gets a start at second base for Jace Peterson. Andre Aldridge will have more on that story in a few moments. Uribe makes his home debut for Atlanta. That's your CPI security Braves defensive lineup. Andrew McCutcheon. Gone are the long flowing locks. Not gone is the incredible offense from one of the game's great young superstars. The MVP of the league two years ago, a four time All Star, Andrew McCutcheon. And over the last month, on May 6th, that's when it got started, he's hit right at 400. Swing and a drive toward left, but that's going to stay in the park. Cunningham's got it. Hey, good start for Williams Perez. That first inning of key he got the Pirates in order. Charlie Morton to face the Braves in the bottom of the first.
First inning, here come the Braves at 26 and 27, only three games out of first place in the National League East. Cameron Mapin will be atop the Academy Sports and Outdoors starting lineup with Jace Peterson inactive in a starting role tonight. That means Pedro Siriaca will make his first start at second for Atlanta tonight. Home debut for Juan Uribe. And Tommy, a familiar face, pitching for the Pirates tonight. Yeah, former Brave Charlie Morton's out there making his third start on the year and seems to be healthy, as Joe said in the open. Two starts, 2-0 two with a 1-9-3 ERA. So he's pitched very well since getting, getting back up here to Pittsburgh. And Charlie Morton off to a great start, 2-0. And a quick strike to Cameron Mabin. Cameron having a great year. 268 average, five homers. And with Jace Peterson out of the starting lineup tonight, Freddy Gonzalez puts his hottest hitter, highest on base guy, in the leadoff spot, at least of late. And that's Maven. A 403 on base in his last 17 games. And a bouncer off the plate. Tough play for Gong in the third. High throw. Infield hit for Cameron Maven. Cameron realized that, that was going to be a fair ball immediately. He was running out of the box quickly. Wasn't one of those that was near the line that he thought might roll foul, and he watched it. Watch this. Immediately put his head down. So after a 10 for 33 road trip for Maven, he's off to a good start at home, a leadoff infield hit. And that'll bring up Andrelton Simmons. See if Andrews can fill up that hole on the right side of the Pirate infield. Big hole between Pedro Alvarez and Neil Walker. And even draws the throw. Charlie Morton's filled out a little bit since he left Atlanta. He was tall and lanky. He's still tall. He's 6'5. He's 235. And now 31 years old. He's just hoping to get healthy and be productive for Pittsburgh as the runner goes. Got a good jump. The throw is way late. No chance for Cervelli as Maben swipes his eighth base and he's in scoring position with nobody out. Cervelli's only thrown out one out of every four base stealers, so the Braves may try to take advantage of that in this series. Good jump by Cameron here early on. Good crossover. Andrelton helped him a little bit by faking the bunt. That went all the way to the backstop, and Maven will take third on a wild pitch. Even in his rehab assignments, Tom Charlie pitched really well. Didn't give up many runs, with exception of one, was a little rough. But everything has been real good getting to the big leagues and he's carried that right on into this. Yeah, he pitched well like you said his rehab rehab seven innings, seven innings, six and a third and two seven inning outings back in the big leagues. Foul away by Simmons, two balls and a strike. Well, pitching has been a big part of the Pirates real resurgence. Last 14 games for the Pirates, their starters are 11 and 1. More than a strikeout in inning over that stretch. And a base hit the other way. A thing of beauty for Hamilton Simmons, and the Braves manufacture the game's first run. That was awesome. Braves baseball at its finest here in 2015. Just fought it off, wasn't trying to do too much with it. Well, trying to like we talk about all the time trying to do the right thing put the ball in play with a runner in scoring position and you end up getting a good result. So 22 RBIs for Simmons that snaps an 0 for 11 slide and Freddie Freeman's the batter and the Pirates. <laughs> try to shift but they had a mix up in the middle infield. Sir Belly had to tell him step off. Yeah they had, they had men in motion on that play. Yeah, they did they were square dancing out there. Freddie Freeman had a monster road trip for Atlanta. He hit five homers on the 10 game trip and now is up to 10. 
Like I said the way he was swinging it to ship won't matter. He's going to hit him hit and hit him in the seats. Rocket shot into right center field. That's going to get down for a hit. And Charlie Morton hasn't retired a hitter yet. Three straight singles for the Braves. Simmons stops at second. I know the reputation for Polanco is that he's got a good arm, and he does. But when I've watched him play, it's very inaccurate. I mean, there's a lot of tailing action to his throws, and Anderson chose not to try to take third here. And probably a smart play, but I'd like to see them at least test him and see if he can put a throw on the bag. Here's another hot hitter for the Braves. Right fielder Nick Markakis. He's hitting 307. And three straight multi hit games for Nick. Picks a curve for a strike. What was the note I saw? Five doubles in his last six at bats. He's the fourth man to hit in the inning. Nobody out. And across the shoot tops, even count. Offense for the Braves has not been the problem. They are scoring lots of runs. Scored eight in Arizona on Wednesday night. As that missed inside. They scored six on Tuesday and eight on Monday. They had a huge series at the plate against the Diamondbacks and were able to win just one of those three games. Two balls and a strike. Out of play two and two. Cameron Maven got it started with an infield hit. Clint Hurdle watching Charlie Morton struggle in the first. Two two. Up the middle, they had him played perfectly. Flip to second, and the throw to first is double play. Mercer to Walker to Alvarez, Simmons to third. That's a big ground out for Charlie Morton. Two it out. Exactly right, Chip. I mean, playing him behind the back nearly at second base. Almost hit right to him. But a, but a pirate specialty, though, the double play ball. Turned a bunch of them this year. Charlie Morton ground ball specialist 60% of his outs on the ground so that's exactly what he needed and certainly what the Buccos defense needed. That's the 63rd double play turned by Pittsburgh and now Uribe bats his first. At bat at Atlanta as a brave. And one all, almost to the backstop one ball no strikes. I had that number written down I couldn't find it. I knew it was there somewhere. You just out of practice. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> It's been a welcome addition at the plate. He's had a couple of homers as a brave. And Tommy, I don't know if you saw all the games on the West Coast. He made a couple of incredible plays at third base. Rocket shots playing in on the grass. And always strong throws to first. Yeah, I mean, he can hit, obviously, but he can pick it over there at third base. They're good hands. There's a strike. One of the things we learned about him, too, and we're told after the Braves picked him up is. I know you remember how accurate Vinny Castillo was with his throws mm -hmm. and Uribe has been compared to him. Oh. Just missed Cervelli held it Morton with a long look in and trip Gibson the home plate umpire tonight. That's a pretty good pitch. Uribe walks with two outs. Men are at the corners. Only the second walk for Morton this year. Again, he's pitched just 14 and two-thirds innings so far for the Pirates. 
Now E.J. Persinski Matt sees the Atlanta catcher tonight. Yeah, well, what a shot in the arm for the Pirates rotation to have this guy come back uh, after all these hip issues that he had and throw seven innings in each of his first two starts. They're not having to baby him, obviously. No, I, you know, for all the issues that he's had, like you said, health-wise and whatnot, to see him come back and his first two starts back in the big leagues, pitch the way he's pitched, they got to be thinking, oh, man, maybe he's finally healthy, like you said, and figuring something out here and could be a huge addition for him. With Burnett, Liriano, Cole. They got some starters, boy. Jeff Locke tomorrow. High curve ball. Brzezinski took it for a strike. That's what I remember about Charlie. That big, big cook. It's a good one. AJ at 267 for the year. They're trying to tie him up inside. It's 0 2. Uribe's running and a shot towards second. And through the wickets of Neil Walker and had plenty of spin on it. Atlanta gets a gift run. Get a gift. His fourth error of the year looked like an easy play. And that big hop came right up between the wickets, like you said. Missed everything. He couldn't believe it. That's the 39th error. They came in 11th in the league in defense. So it's 2-0. And more pitches for Charlie Morton in the first. Todd Cunningham bats. This guy's one foul. Todd had a one for 28 stretch working for Atlanta at the plate. He's figured that out. He has five hits in his last nine at bats, and he's bumped his average back over 300. And he served that one foul. And out of play in that final game against the Diamondbacks on Wednesday Atlanta as I said scored eight runs all eight runs came with two outs. Braves have one two out run tonight. Morton's already given up three unearned runs. Make it four now four unearned runs and just two plus starts. So they're not playing very good defense behind him if he's getting those ground balls. Uribe at third, Brzezinski at first. A walk and an error after a double play. And now a shot towards center. McCutcheon on the run. Great jump. And he glides into the gap to make the play to retire the side. Braves get two runs, three hits in error, and two left. We head to the second.
Braves.com. Voting this year is exclusively online and available on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Vote up to 35 times at Braves.com. Braves need your help. Last balloting, only one Brave regular was in the top 10 in voting at any position for the National League All-Star team, and that was catcher A.J. Pruszynski. Pirates find themselves in a sticky situation after an inning. Charlie Morton allows a couple of runs. A Pittsburgh error at second scored the second Atlanta run. And now Williams Perez will face Walker, Kong, and Alvarez for the Buccos. Native Pittsburgher Neil Walker leads off. He's hit three homers. He's knocked in 20 and he's batting 267. So Williams Perez got through the first with little trouble. Let's see what happens in the second. A strike. Joe, that's why that key was so important, right? Yeah, those batting averages after the first inning become pretty minuscule and he hasn't given up an earned run from the second inning on. Even count with Walker. And fouled straight back. Tougher for Tommy for finesse guys or power guys to kind of get going in that first couple of innings. Well, being a finesse guy uh, yes. and having had that issue, I'll say, I would say finesse guys because I mean I think you have to go out there and and not only establish throwing strikes, but you got to figure out what's working. It's kind yeah. of a loaded question, so right? I mean. But I think for you know, for power guys, the first inning is no different than a lot of situations that we jokingly talk about with a power guy where you're sitting out there and you go, well, geez, I'm not really sure what to do here. Let's try 97 and see if we can get away with that. As a finesse guy, you can't do that. Look at that breaking ball. Nasty. Maybe a change up. It took a hard, hard turn in on Neil Walker, and that's the first strikeout. It's kind of a it's a, it's a circle change, but he kind of rolls it over Tommy and I mean because he slingshots it out here. It looks like it's never going to get to the yeah. plate. I think that one there you, you look at the replay it kind of probably ended up a little bit more in the heart of the plate than he mm -hmm. wanted. So I think it clearly fooled him on speed and a little bit of movement. This is an intriguing player for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jung Ho Gan is a shortstop third baseman. He had 40 homers last year in the Korean baseball organization and is the first player from that league to come and play in the major leagues as a position player. The Pirates paid a $5 million posting fee and then signed this man to a four year $11 million contract. He's already provided them with some big hits. And it's inside two balls, two strikes. Further proof of the internationalization of the great game of baseball. You know about the players from the Caribbean, Latin America, South America, Japan. Well, Korea, they're coming. This guy's a good player. 2-2 two -two pitch. Just inside, full count. Say Chano Park might have been the first. As a pitcher, yeah, but right. from that specific Korean league, he's the first position player. I know, but I mean, it, from Korea, from South Korea, Chan Ho kind of opened the door yeah. a little bit. Check swing roller foul out of play. It is a, as you can imagine, a dramatically different lifestyle. In the Korean baseball organization, every road trip is taken by bus, and the farthest road trip is four hours. Think about how different that is compared to. Major League Baseball here in the States as he takes a walk. And he's the first base runner of the night. A one out free pass for Jung Ho Gong. That's how you pronounce it. it. Looks like Kang, but it's pronounced Gong. And only his ninth walk in 115 at bats. Here's Pedro Alvarez, former star at Vanderbilt. Last year was the Pirates opening day third baseman for the fourth straight year. They moved him across to first base. 
against Atlanta last August 18th. He's been the first baseman since. <laughs> Alvarez, nine homers, 27 knocked in, and hitting 244 for the year. Towards center. Maven will try to cut it off. He'll play it on a third hop. He bobbles the ball. Alvarez thought about going to second. He stopped. And now Simmons fakes a throw back to third as Gong wandered too far around third. They were yelling, get back. As Hamilton Simmons, as we know, will throw behind a base runner on the base pass. Well, the third the base coaches for the Pirates have flipped jobs from last year. Nick Lave has moved over to first. Rick Sofield's now at third. And Sofield was waving him home. He had to throw up a late stop sign after Maben recovered. So Francisco Cervelli is the batter. The former Yankee catcher is the man charged with replacing Russell Martin, who went to Toronto on a big free agent contract. So far, the Pirates are thrilled with Cervelli's work. I gotta say, so far they gotta be pretty happy with what he's done to replace Russell Martin. Hit. Pittsburgh's on the board. Alvarez will stop at second as Gong comes home to score. And at the strikeout, a walk and two singles makes it a 2 1 game. Oh, my baby. That looked like that had a lot of the plate, too. Yep, right down yeah. Broadway. This team does hit into a lot of double plays. In fact, they've only grounded into 29 for the year, and that's the best in the National League. That's the lowest. Use one here. And Jordy Mercer is the Pirate shortstop. Like his Pirates club, he has started slowly at the plate. But also like his Pirates club, he's heating up. Two homers. They've come in consecutive games for the Pirates. And too high. One ball, no strikes. Jordy Mercer out of Taloga, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. Joe, where's Taloga? I knew you were going to ask me, and I don't know. Don't know? No. I know it's a real small town, I'll tell you that. Should have just said it was in Oklahoma. Yeah, I think it's somewhere in that central, northeast, southwest <laughs> area, maybe <laughs> northwest. Somewhere north of Texas. Yeah. Well, I've been there between Texas and Kansas. <laughs> One ball, one strike. In the air to center. Maven measures that up and gets his man. There's the second out. It's a little northwest of Oklahoma City, Chip. Right out there by Mall Hall and northwest of Watonga. Does that help you? It helps me. Thank you. Yeah, it helps. Helps, helps a lot. <laughs> I got a lot of help, too. <laughs> Here's Charlie Morton. Injuries have been a big problem for Charlie, and that's a shame. He's got good stuff. Tommy John surgery, the torn hip labrum that required surgery. He's in the middle year of a three-year contract that he signed with the Pirates. And this one's blooped foul down the first base side. Freeman sliding try, can't get there. He lost the glove. And great effort for Freeman. And it's a swinging strike for Morton. It's funny. I just talked to Freddie today about how does he break his glove in? You know, where does he break it? With the middle of the glove in the pocket. And he goes, oh, I just let the glove break in where it breaks in and just hope it stays on my hand. <laughs> funny. You know, that one didn't cooperate so much in that play. No. Oh, and one for Charlie. 
Nice strike. Nice story on Morton in the Pittsburgh papers. They feel that they finally got him back mechanically where he needs to be. He said he created a lot of bad habits trying to compensate for the hip injury. Pitched through a lot of pain and finally could bear it no longer. As he is struck out, Williams Perez surrenders one but not the lead. One out, walk, two singles, puts Pittsburgh on the board for the first time. We head to the home second. It's 2 1 Atlanta. And there's a reason why Pedro's in the starting lineup tonight. And to tell us why, let's check in for the first time with Andre Aldridge. John Ray? All right, Chip, thanks a lot. As you guys mentioned earlier, no Chase Peterson at second base tonight. That's because of the bruise between his left thumb and forefinger. Now, with the off day yesterday, they decided to go to the doctor, and he got a cortisone shot there. He's had the problem for a while. Freddie, said, Freddie Gonzalez said, really, it's a problem of gripping the bat. That if he really wanted to, he'd get Jason to the game tonight as a pinch runner or possibly for defense. But uh, he doesn't want him in here trying to grip the bat. But that would defeat the purpose of getting a cortisone shot yesterday. Of course, that's only what Jace wants to do over the past 35 games. He's hit 290 and 131 at bats with an on-base percentage of 365. So hopefully we'll see him back on the field, Chip, on Sunday. Thank you, Audrey. It's a great report. Hopefully that injection will calm that Discomfort down for Jace. He's playing great on the just completed road trip for Atlanta. So Pedro Siriaco makes his first start of the year for the Braves at second base tonight. And takes inside from Charlie Morton. One ball, no strikes. Might remember a couple of games ago, Chip, that Jace put down a couple of bunts. Um, they had a shift on for him, so he had an opening, but that kind of explains, too, maybe that thumb was bothering him to swing. In for a strike, it's two and one. <laughs> Charlie Morton gave up two runs in the first. A Neil Walker error, the difference in the game to this point was outside. Pedro didn't chase it, full count. Williams Perez to follow. He's the Braves pitcher and he stands on deck. Line to second. Walker catches this one. And Siriaco is the first out. Let's check out the rest of the Pittsburgh Pirates defensive lineup. CPI security tells us that Andrew McCutcheon controls center field. And he is as good as it gets. Polanco and Marte, two youngsters in the outfield corners. Gong, Mercer, Walker, and Pedro Alvarez at first. Cervelli, we've seen behind the plate. Of course, Charlie Martin is the man on the mound. 
Williams Perez one for six as a hitter takes the ball. It's a couple that Charlie's really pulled to the glove side and nowhere close to the plate. Two and oh. That's it for a strike. That'd be some nerves for Charlie Morton. He's never beaten the Braves. He's 0 2 against his former club. The losses came to Jair Jurgens and Derek Lowe. Remember them? Pitch. And foul at the plate. Yeah, the last time he faced him was four years ago. That was May of 2011. Call the Braves traded Charlie Morton and Jeff Locke to the Pirates for Nate McClough. 